Listen. You would think, good morning, good morning, wise. <laughs> you would think that I have never did a live before. You would think. You would think like I ain't I ain't never came on here before a day in my life. This was so last minute, so unpredictable. So I was not even planning on coming on this morning. Um I was up early this morning because I was trying to call my hairdresser to see if she could work me in today versus my appointment I had scheduled for next week because my head was looking a hot mess. And then I said, I come and talk to the people, you know, Lord, I come talk to the people, Lord, after I get my hair did. And so <laughs> he would not let me go back to sleep, Jesus. <laughs> um, the Lord would not allow me to go back to sleep. And so I had remember when I was finishing up some work on yesterday, I, I remember saying out loud, like, oh, I forgot to do my content for the, you know, the quit live that I was going to come on and do. And so when my husband got up to go to work this morning, usually when he get up and go to work, you know, I get up and I start praying for him. Um, and then I normally like roll on back over and go to sleep. <laughs> and that was my plan. And so as soon as I felt my sleep, like, you know, coming back on me, because I, I have a session today. So as soon as I felt my sleep kind of like come upon me, I felt a Lord tugging in my spirit. So I started praying in the spirit. And I'm like, what's going on? Like, you know, I had already prayed. So what has come from? And so after I did that, immediately, immediately, all these thoughts came to my mind. And it was like, you know, right. You got you to write. So I'm like, okay. So I wrote this whole long, you know, my whole long paragraph for content. Because like I said, I haven't been really planning content ahead of time. Especially since I have not been, you know, coming on regularly doing lives. And so, um, and I wasn't planning on coming on because I said my hair wasn't done. I, I was not up to par for this. You know, this is, this is self-care Saturday. You have, to, you have to show up for self-care Saturday, Jesus. And um, God was like, I hear he won't hear none of that. And so I wrote out my content or whatever. And I said, all right, I'm, I, you know, I share this with the people when, you know, I get my hair did or whatever. And Lord was like, no, somebody need to hear this today. <laughs> he like, no, somebody need to hear this today right now. So you might want to go ahead and get yourself together and figure out whatever you're going to do with your hair. Uh, figure that part out and, and come on on here. So good morning, wives. I'm here. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And happy self-care Saturday. Coach T here with you. Only for a moment. Only for a moment. Like I said, I have a session today. I wasn't planning on coming on, even though I had already rolled out my content when I was going to share with you. Actually, that was not my topic originally. Um, her self-love was definitely not my topic. Um, I was going to come on here and talk to you about, you know, coping with your mental health. And I guess I definitely would, you know, share um, some of that in this in this message as well. Um but sometimes when the Lord give me things, it's like I cannot turn off until I actually write it down. Like my, he would not let me rest until I like either write it down. So I think once I write it down, it's like, okay, I got it out. I, you know, I empty it out my, my mind. Um, but then when I know I have to actually come in and say it, he would not let me like, you know, you know, turn it over and no more shut eye, go ahead and get your coffee, get your tea, whatever you need to get yourself up and, and, and go talk to the people. And so I'm here, I'm here and good morning. All right. <laughs> good morning my hairdresser was you know she responded back and she was saying you know i didn't have any cancellations you know right now it's not looking good because you know she had just came in from a trip so she wasn't already not feeling her best and um i was like man well i'm you know this gonna have to be like you know wait until next week mm -mm. when god has something for you to do god is not he don't care about no hair he don't care about no timing he don't care about nobody no cancellations he said you got to get this word out so on that note Welcome. My name is Coach T. I am a Christian mental health wife coach and I um, coach wives. I coach wives who are normally um, separated from their spouses, whether that's inside the home or outside of the home. Um, those spouses may be dealing with toxic behaviors related to addiction, abandonment, or um adultery okay and so i help those wives i help those wives uh over 
overcome some of the mental and emotional distress that she may be experiencing in that marriage. I help her also to deal with her, you know, the grief that she may be going through by being separated from that spouse. And I help her to navigate, navigate through some of those up down emotions that she is, you know, kind of like on, on the up down emotion that she's kind of like, you know, dealing with as well. Um, I also help wives and women to self care for themselves, to prioritize their well being by self caring for themselves. And sometimes wives or the women that I speak with, they may be dealing with, um, you know, some trauma from their past. They may be dealing with, you know, some low self-esteem issues. They may be struggling with some, you know, confidence, you know, confident issues. Um, they may be in some cases, um, some cases that are a little bit more severe. These wives themselves may have had some of the same things that have taken place with themselves, like adultery and abandonment and addictions. And so some of these wives are also dealing with these things themselves. Um, and so I try to help, I try to help those wives to, um, focus more on, um, prioritizing their well-being and changing some of those, uh, toxic behaviors and changing it for it to, um, for them to reflect, reflect and look more like Christ. All right. And so today, and so today, I just wanted to come in for a few minutes and few minutes and just share some transparency with you, share some transparency with you. Good morning. Um, I wanted just to come share some transparency with you before, um, um, you know, we get into this weekend. Hello, December. Welcome. Welcome, December. We glad to see you. We made it, y'all. We made it another round uh, for, you know, another almost 365 days. We, we are at the end. We're at the end. A lot of people didn't make it this far. So this should be something to be, you know, praised. This, this should be definitely something to be praised. Um, y'all probably wonder about my hat. Okay. This is a this is this is a fancy hat for me. And it's probably not like the weather type of hat that you will wear, but this is a weekend. And I think I would, I've been sharing with y'all like I've been wanting to go like to, on the beach. Usually this weekend would be the weekend that my husband and my kids we would go to vac on vacation in Miami. It, it was like around the first weekend of uh, the first week in December. And so I just felt like since my hair wasn't done, um and I'm self-loving on myself. I thought I'd just put this hat on. And it kind of reminds me of just being in Miami. Even though I'm not in Miami, I'm probably not going. Um, I just thought I'd put this hat on. So that's what the hat is about. Because my hair's not done. Because my hairdresser um, don't have no availability. Anyways, I wanted to come on this morning. I wanted to come on this morning because the Lord pushed me out of the bed to come on. Um, and share some transparency with you. That's the other thing. It was like, God, what you want me to share with these people on today is really, really thick stuff. You know, you have to really get your mind right for stuff like this. But when the Lord says move and the Lord says somebody need to hear this, I, I'm, I'm obedient. I'm obedient. And so um, my transparency, my transparency on my standing journey, on my standing journey when my husband was on, you know, on the outside of the home, but then also on my journey when my husband and I were uh, separated on the inside of the home. I think, I think, and I've always shared with you, the hardest, the hardest for me was living in the inside in the home with my husband and us living a separate life. When he was on the outside, it was not, it was not as hard. I'm not saying it wasn't hard. It was hard. But him living on the inside of the home and us still living a separate life, um, that definitely, definitely was hard. And when I talk about, you know, taking care of your mental health, you have to understand the type of mental uh, coping that you have to really do when you're dealing with a spouse that's inside the home and has made a decision to live a separate life from you. You know, that's, that's really, really hard to endure. And so you. Because I was just working on this do not disturb thing and it's and it's not working. <laughs> it's It's not working. Um, I gotta get that fixed. Um, you have to understand when you're when you're married to a spouse who um, is living in the in who's inside the home with you and has made a decision to live a separate life. You have to understand the different type of mental uh, breakdowns that you you can experience on that journey. You know, you have to understand that the different type of ways that your mind is being you know like <laughs> you can lose your mind in something like that because it's not making sense. It's, it's, it, it won't make sense to you. Um, and so one of the hardest things during that process, during that time, was um, having to endure hearing my husband constantly reminding me and telling me how he didn't want me anymore. 
he didn't want me anymore. I don't want you anymore. I don't want you anymore. I want a divorce. I don't want you anymore. I don't want you anymore. I want a divorce. And it was crazy because when he was doing, you know, when he, and I always say this is be, before God got to him. <laughs> These stories are before God got to him that I share. Um, I always say that um, when he would do, he when he was doing things that he know he shouldn't have been doing or whatever, and I would confront him or I would, you know, call him out on those things or whatever. Um, he used to have these papers, like, you know, he would have, he had the divorce papers in his hands. Um, and of course he was waiting for me to fill out the divorce papers with him or whatever. And, you know, I didn't. Um, and so anytime he would go out or stay out late or, you know, I've been caught him in something or whatever, he would always like, you know, dingle those papers in my face. Almost like, you know, you better leave me alone or, you know, we're going to go get a divorce or, you know, you better, you know, you better back off from me or, you know, we're going to sign these papers type of thing or whatever. So it was kind of like, almost like, you know, you know, I had to be good in a sense in order for him not to bring that up. If it was for a long, for a very long time, I was intimidated by that. I was very intimidated by it because no, I didn't want a divorce. But then I started questioning God, like, God, you told me not to do this. <laughs> you know, you told me not to get a divorce. But this man is constantly telling me that he wants a divorce and he does not want me anymore. How am I supposed to handle that? How am I supposed to do that? And a lot of times when I would bring those type of conversations up with the Lord, he would not respond to me. God was on silent <laughs> and I was struggling with that. You know, it was like, go back to the last thing I told you and hold on to that. And so the more and more I would like ask God, like, you know, how am I supposed to handle this? Or how am I supposed to like, you know, deal with this? This man is saying one thing, you telling me something totally different. What am I supposed to do in a situation like this? Because first of all, anybody gonna keep on talking to me like this and telling me how many times they don't want me. Okay. <laughs> First of all, you're not going to keep on telling me over and over again how much you don't want me. And I think that was the part that was very, very hard for me. Um, and so mentally, mentally, it left me crushed. Um, emotionally, I was unbalanced. I was all over the place. You know, I was just kind of like, you know, just I was just completely confused about you know, what was taking place. Um, and I always go back to this is why it's so important for wives to know that they know that they know, no, no, <laughs> this is something God has called you to. Okay. You have to know, no, no. One of the things the Lord will always remind me after that time of past was I always give you a forewarning, or I always give you something before it happens. Or I always tell you something or share something with you before these types of things happen. And he would, he would. And so, um, a lot of times, you know, God would just out of, out of nowhere share with me, you know, how much my husband loved me, um, how much, you know, he, he loves me, but he cannot express his love. He's not able to express, um, his love to me. And I'm trying to go to my notes, what I had here. Um, he would tell me how much he would love me. He would prep me, you know, God would prep me in advance for, you know, what's getting ready to come. But I was, just, I would think that, you know, God was just sharing, you know, something with me about my husband, but really what he was doing was prepping me because something was coming after he speaks. And wives have to understand, anytime God speaks, you have to understand something comes after that. <laughs> like, if he's speaking to you, if he's giving you a revelation, he's giving you that revelation because now that he has spoken those things, the enemy's job is to come and take away that way he has spoken. The enemy's job is to come and remove what he has said. And so... I always tell wives, when you hear God and when he's speaking to you, write it down. This is one of the major reasons why journaling is so important during this time and during this season. When you are going through this type of you know situation is because when God is saying something, you have to write that down. Because sometimes when your testing comes, you're not thinking about, you know, the promise. You're not thinking about what he said. Good morning. Good morning, ladies. I'm so sorry. I ain't said good morning to none of y'all. Good morning. Um, you're not thinking about... You're, you're not thinking about the promise. You're not thinking about, you know, what he told you. You're thinking about, you know, this foolishness that your husband's speaking to you. That's what, that's what you're thinking about. And so God will always bring that back to my mirror. It's like, you got to go back to the last thing I told you. Because the last thing I told you is going to always, it's going to always uh, follow uh, some type of, of, of attack. You know, you the, the enemy is going to come 
and try to find a way to remove or take the promise away that, you know, that I gave you. I think it talks about it in the Bible. Um, I think in Matthews where, you know, once that seed has been planted, you know, once the, you know, once that word has been spoken, the enemy, the enemy's job is to come and take away what, you know, what God has shared with you or what was, you know, what, even when you in church, if you, if you had a, a heard a word or heard a message, um, and then you like, you know, it was there and then all of a sudden it's not there anymore because it was taken away from you. So it's important, wise. it's important that you do journal down everything, everything that you hear God say to you, even if you're not sure if he's speaking to you or you're not sure if this is, you know, him or what he's saying, write it down, write it down. And then you can go back and confirm his word, um, confirm what he said in his word. All right. And so God reminded me that he reminded me that, you know, I always let you know ahead of time that your husband, you know, I, I let you know when something is getting ready to come. And so he was sharing me, he was sharing me, you know, your husband loves you. He's not in a good place. Um, and, and I want to just pause and say this too. Wives have to understand that a lot of times these husbands are in a very delusional place. They are in a very delusional place. You see your husband with the other woman. Or you see your husband, you know, left the home. Or you see your husband doing, you know, drugs. You have to understand, wives, these men are on, under demonic attack. You have to understand they have allowed the enemy access to their lives. And because they have allowed the enemy access to their lives, they are under demonic attack. Half of the time, the things that they are doing and saying does not make sense. It only makes sense to them. They know, they know most of the time what they're doing is not right. They already know. So sometimes it really, really burdens me when I hear wives trying to kind of like come back with, you know, these husbands or trying to, you know, you know, make peace with these husbands or try, you know, we need to have a, you know, we need to have a sit down and have a conversation. They don't even realize that their husbands are no longer there. <laughs> they they are no longer there. If, if your husband of however many years you've been married picks up one day and decide to go and live a separate life from you, you have to, you have to understand something has happened. <laughs> that man is under attack. He's under some type of, of, of attack. Your husband, after so many years, you know, made a decision come to you and tell you and your kids, like, you know, he's moving out and he's going to live with another family. Something is wrong. <laughs> this man is under attack. And so it, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of time for wives to try to have conversations with these men or try to reason with these men when they are not in their right state of mind. And this is why I always say this is important, why you get some type of accountability and align yourself with someone who can walk with you on this journey. Okay. Um, so the Lord was sharing me how much my husband, you know, how he really felt about me. Um, and my husband, he would, he would do something to proceed, you know, um, before, before, before this happened, he will, you know, cook dinner or he would go and, um, you know, change a light bulb in the house or he would fix something that I had asked him to fix or he would, um, you know, whatever he, he'll do something. And so to me, <laughs> the flesh part of me, I would be like, oh, he just doing that because he know he finna get ready and go do A, B, and C or whatever. You know, he just doing that because he's going to do, you know, he finna, he know he plan on, you know, staying out. He plan on, you know, going to do whatever. But even if that's what his plan is, it shows that he does have a conscience. He has a conscience and he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing He have and he has a conscience. And that is, they call it, you know, quote unquote guilt trip. Um, but that's also a way that God is dealing with him. It's also a way that, that God is dealing with him. So, you know, I always tell wives, even when it, when it seem like it's off, if it seem, if it seem off, it is usually off. Okay. But you have to learn how to look at it with a different perspective. You have to have a different eye. You can't just be like, oh, he only doing this because of this reason. No, he's probably doing these things because the Lord is dealing with him. His conscience is beating him at this time. Guilt is coming upon him. But because he have had, uh, because he have allowed the enemy access to him, he can't stop it even if he wanted to. He he can't pull away from it even if he wanted to. And this is why I'm so big on wives extending grace to their husbands. Extend grace to him because he knows that he's wrong or, or what he's doing is not right. And a lot of times, you know, wives are beating them over the heads and not and not and not allowing them that grace, not recognizing that the enemy has him captive. This man has this man is 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 in chains to the enemy, okay? So it's important that um, whites are in tune with God, but it's also important that whites are in tune with themselves, okay? And this is kind of what I want to talk about a little bit about, you know, loving on yourself, um, really, really, really understanding your self-worth and understanding who you are. Y'all see I'm rocking my, you know, heavy on the self-love shirt today. Um, I just really, really, really encourage whites. I know this is really 
um, hard and difficult for some whites who are experiencing um, hardship, separation, division, um, disloyalty, <laughs> dishonoring um, during this time of the year with husbands who are not in their right state of mind or who are not in the home. Um, and so, you know, Christmas season, you know, Thanksgiving, those types of things, it's, just, it, it's family time. It is family time. And it can be very, very um, hurtful, sad, painful when you are experiencing hardship and all you want to do is be with your husband and do things as a family, okay? Um, hearing repeatedly someone tell you that they don't want you, it will interfere with your mental health. Hearing someone tell you over and over again how much they do not want you, they don't love you no more, um, and you hear this over and over again. You're not just hearing this one or two times. Like you hear, I would hear it. I was hearing it daily. I was hearing it daily. Like I said, my situation. I always share. You know, my injury, my marital injury was addiction. My husband had, um, you know, was struggling with his his his, you know, a, a, an addiction. And so because of that, I heard it daily. You know, I I heard it daily. It's almost like if you say something, you are taking a risk on this lion coming out. Okay. <laughs> so a lot of times, I kind of like just kept closed mouth, um, as much as the Lord would allow me to. <laughs> And that's just me being honest. I try to keep my mouth closed sometimes, y'all. Sometimes I keep my mouth closed. I ain't always keep my mouth closed, okay? Because she got a little bit of uh, hood in her too, all right? I'm holy, but I'm, I got a tab of, a tab of hood in me. So for the most part, I would try to keep my mouth closed because I already knew, you know, I already knew, especially if I had like something planned or, you know, I'm trying to like, you know, do something or, you know, me and the kids has, I would just like, you know, just ignore him. But some days I would, I would go to war with him. You know, I would really would go to war with him. Um, and so that, those types of words, which are considered word curses. It can, it can interfere with your mental health, okay? And so knowing your self-worth and knowing who you are makes a huge difference. Um, the enemy was using my husband to break down my self-worth. The enemy was using my husband to break down my self-worth. And like I shared earlier, a lot of times the Lord, I feel like the Lord was like, leaving me out here to dry because <laughs> I feel like, you know, why are you not saying anything? <laughs> like God has been talking to me for a very long time. Good morning. Like God, you've been talking to me for a very long time. Like, why are you not saying anything now? Like, why are you not saying anything? Like, what am I supposed to do? I didn't know what to do. And so he wouldn't say nothing. He would just, he would just, he would just be silent. And I think that was so frustrating most times because I would just be out there like, you know, if you're telling me to stay in this marriage, surely you don't want me to stay in this marriage with this man talking to me this way. Surely you don't want me to be in this marriage with this man treating me this way. Like, surely you don't want that. But God wanted me to kick into who I was. I needed to know who I was. He wanted, he wanted me to figure out who I was. So he allowed me to sit in that place. And he allowed my husband to keep coming from me day after day after day after day, week after week after week, month after month after month. We did this. Like, we did this for a while. Um, and the Lord would just, he, he let me sit in that. And it was almost like he was trying to teach me something there. He was trying to teach me something there. He's like, you need to know who you are. Do you believe the words that he's saying to you? Do you believe that's what you are? Do you believe this is what it is? Because my husband, he, he won't just stop at one thing. He'll just go on and on and on and on and on. Okay. And so you have to learn how to discern the why. You have to learn how to discern the why. Like, why is the enemy coming for me so hard in this area? Why is the enemy coming for me so hard with this? Why is this part of my marriage such a, 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 a hold on me? Why is this? And those are usually, those are usually indicators that um, those things are the things that God wants to use to, uh, Used for the kingdom and he's going to use you to to be a blessing to people those are usually indicates that those are the things that god wants to use for the kingdom and he's going to use you in those ways so when i say i'm a you know certified christian mental health wife coach for a long time i was avoiding that word <laughs> i was avoiding that, that word but the lord was like no this is what you this is what you have had to endure you've had to learn how to endure mental you know, being, being mentally heavy, um, being mentally healthy in a heavy situation or in a heavy condition that you have been in. And that's what it really has been about. Okay. Um, I had to make a choice to obey God and forfeit the assignment. I had to make a choice to obey God or forfeit the assignment. It was either like you was going to do what God asked you to do or you was not. <laughs> it's like God used to share with me and he would always tell me, he would say, as long as you will be here, your husband will be here as well. As long as you are here, he will also be here. If you make a decision to leave, then he will leave. But if you are going to be here, you're, if you're going to be here, he will be here also. And I always like question it. Like, what does that mean? 
<laughs> like I need you to give me more answers. And this is why I always share with wife like when God is speaking to you in the beginning stages of your stand, man, that's the sweetest place to be in because he does not continue that. He will talk to you, but it will start to little bit by little bit by little bit. He won't give you the whole thing. He won't say all this. He won't show all this. He's like, give you a little bit of pieces and he wants you to figure it out. He wants you to navigate through that. And so if, in the beginning stages of this thing, if you are hearing from God, man, take that in. It's the sweetest place to be in because there will come a time when he's not speaking as much and you are having no other choice but to depend on the promise and the last thing he's told you. Not only that, you're having to depend on what you know about God. Uh, which is why it's so important that you do your work and that you come up with a self-care regimen, that one-on-one time that you spend with God so that you would know how to, that you would know the God that you are serving. You, you know this God. You know he's loving. You know he's faithful. You know he cannot lie. You know he's always with you. So when the enemy tries to come and play head games with you and, and try to tell you one thing, you know those things are lies because you have been spending time with him. That's that that one-on-one -on -one time, that self-care time is important, wise. It's important because it's not just, oh, I'm just sitting here with God, I'm in his presence, or oh, I'm just sitting here with God and I'm just, you know, worshiping. No, you are learning the God that you are serving. You are learning the God that you are believing, you know, believing in. You are learning him. He's teaching you things about him. So when hardship comes, you know, oh, that's not from God. <laughs> Even if God is allowing this, God is allowing this because he's gonna use this for something else greater later on. Okay. Good morning. You have to know that this is not just about spending time just to be spending time. Oh, I'm here. I'm in the presence of the Lord. I've been praying. I've been fasting. So many, so many whites are just so slack in this area. It's almost like they feel like they are, they, they're doing God a favor. God, like, I don't need you to do me no favors. <laughs> I don't need you to do me no favors. I'm good over here. You need this, okay? You need to know who I am because a hard day is coming. You know, hard times are coming. Even when I restore, even when I bring him back, even when I turn things around, you have to understand you're going to face another uh, level on, on, on this and you're going to have to deal with some other stuff, okay? And so it's important that you spend that one-on-one -on -one time with him. So I had to make a decision. Do I obey God and or do I fulfill my assignment? Like, do I obey God <laughs> or do I, you know, do I just, just call it quits and just, you know, just stop or whatever. And so that was something that I was after. I've always been the type of person like, why? Like, you know, if something's happened to me, if something's going on, I want to know, I want to know the why behind it. Like, why am I going through this? Why am I dealing with this? That type of thing. That was very important to me. Um, and one of the things that had to teach me is I had to learn how to counsel word curses. I had to learn how to, um, do spiritual warfare, not just for my husband, Wives have to understand spiritual warfare is not just for you praying for your man, you praying for your husband. Spiritual warfare is for you. <laughs> God chose you, wife, for the assignment. God chose you to do something. So that means the enemy plan is to come after you. The enemy's plan is to come for you. So you have to cover yourself. I tell wives all the time, you need to be parent praying more for yourself than you are for your husband. Your husband benefits from you standing. But you are the one that God chose. And because you are the one God chose, you have to understand the enemy is trying to take you out mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. So and the Lord taught me how to cancel out word curses and how to send things back to the sender and how to rebuke and how to shut that things down, you know, and how to speak over myself. I shared with my wife, even in my heart, one of the things I tell wives to do, you know, is speak declarations over yourself, you know, learn how to look yourself in the mirror and remind yourself who you are. It's something I was doing with my children and I didn't even recognize it's something that, you know, the Lord was trying to show me about myself. I will always remind my kids, you know, you're, you're handsome. You're a man of integrity. You, you are a man of God. You are the head, not the tail. You are above and not beneath. And my children, they will repeat these things and I would say these things to them, to them daily or whatever. Not even knowing that, you know, God was like, well, day you're going to be saying the same things for yourself. <laughs> like, you're going to be saying these things for yourself because you need to know what your self-worth is. You need to know who you are. You need to know your identity in Christ. It's important. And so I had to, I had to learn how to navigate through the ugly words. Um, and I had to learn how to rebuke and, and, and cancel word curses. And I had to learn how to pray. I had to learn how to pray. And when I say I had to learn how to pray, yes, I pray in my regular, you know, language. But one of the most powerful things that has really, 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 really been helpful for me on my stand um, was 
me learning how to pray in the spirit. Like that was something that I learned before me and my husband was separated, before we had went to, you know, to that place. Um, that was one of the things that the Lord was prepping me for before he left because these things kind of happened like just before he had, you know, just before he left. And I got really, really good at him praying in the spirit. And I just really feel like that was helpful for me because the words, me saying words, I was like, I'm running out of words. Like I've been praying for this man for a long time. I don't even know what to say no more. Um, so I had to learn how to pray over myself. I had to learn how to encourage myself. Okay. I knew my husband loved me, but one of the things I always sh share with whites, especially whites who are dealing with husband with addictions um, and dealing with, you know, drugs, alcohol, that type of thing. You need to know, educate yourself about your husband's condition. You need to learn and educate yourself about your husband's condition. When a person who is dealing with alcoholism, I know a lot of people are like, you know, well, don't handicap it or don't cripple it, you know, by saying it's a disease. It is, though. It, it really is a disease. And it really, really affects these um, men. I say men because, you know, that was my situation. It really affects these men in different ways. And, and until you have actually experienced that, live with someone in that condition, have seen it firsthand, have dealt with it firsthand, like, you don't really know. <laughs> you, don't, you don't really know. And it's so easy. It's so easy to, to walk away. It's so easy to turn your back on that person. It's so easy to say, I ain't doing this. Because it's hard. It's, it's very, very hard. Um, but I had to learn and I had to educate myself on my husband's condition. I had to learn what it, you know, you know, what it means to be in his, in his position. So I went to the AA classes. I got the books. I studied. I read the articles. I went to these places. I asked questions. You know, I work in the medical field. So I would ask questions even with the doctors, y'all, this, 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 this light. The sun, like I would ask questions with the doctors and everything, just as you know, just to educate myself on you know how to do this or whatever. Oh, the sun, Jesus, just to educate myself on how to to handle him because I didn't know what I was doing, and so I recognized his injury. Um, and I recognized it had a strong, strong, strong grip on him, he had a stronghold, he had a stronghold. Um, and so I learned the words that he would spill over and say out to me negatively was coming from a deep down place that he was feeling about himself. My husband begged me to divorce him. <laughs> he was like, please. He said, I'm doing stuff. I'm doing stuff for you to divorce me. He knew that he was dealing with some stuff. He knew that he was going through some things. He knew that like this is not normal and you don't deserve it. He would tell me this on his sober days. He would tell me things like, you know, you deserve somebody, who, you know, to love you and treat you well. You you deserve somebody who will, you know, honor you and respect you. You, you deserve happiness. Like, he would tell me stuff like that. He would, you know, he would apologize about, you know, his behavior and his condition or whatever. But it was like, that had happened. And baby, then the next day or something come up or whatever, something come up again. Like, it didn't even happen no more. Like, like that, those words was not even said. Um, and so, but I appreciate, I appreciate those moments because it further let it, it further confirmed to me what God was saying about standing and about staying and about recognizing and, and knowing that I'm going to do this for you. <laughs> it won't be your husband. It won't be you. It won't be your children. It won't be nobody that's going to do this. I'm going to be the one that's going to do this. Okay. Um, and so he did. My husband would ask me to divorce him repeatedly. He, he asked me to, to divorce him. And I had every reason to divorce him. I had every reason to leave him. I had every reason. He did everything in the book, almost. Okay? So I had every reason, but I didn't um, because God told me not to. God told me to stand by him. God told me to be here with him. Um, and so you need to first know, God, are you calling me to this stand? Are you calling me to do this? Are you calling me to, you know, stand for this type of husband? Okay, and if you are, you need to get instructions. You need to know what the promise is. You need to know what God is telling you to do. You need to know what God is saying for you to do. But then right after those things, why why after those things and why I always talk about self-care, you need to know who you are. You need to know your self-worth. You need to know your value. You need to know, you know, your self-importance. You need to validate yourself. You need to know that you are not what's in front of you. You need to know those types of things, okay? Your husband, your marriage injury is a small piece of the puzzle. God allows the ugly things to take place in your marriage sometimes to strengthen you. And I didn't know that's what he was doing. He will, he allowed me in that place with my husband, but that's, those things were all also strengthening me and making me a better person. One of my favorite Bible verses come from out of Song of Solomon 3 and 4. It says, I have found the one who my soul loves. I have found the one who my soul loves. You could not have paid me. You could not have paid me at the altar <laughs> a million bucks. Told me what was going to happen. <laughs> told me what I was going to go through. Told me what I was going to endure. You couldn't have paid me enough. 
for me to go through half of what I have had to endure. You couldn't have paid me enough. I would have been like, no, I ain't doing it. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Oh, who? Oh, do what? I'm not going to do that. Okay. I'm not going to do that. You couldn't have paid me enough. But now, but now I truly understand God created my husband just for me. I truly, truly understand he has been the greatest, the greatest lesson of my marital growth, of my maturity, of my faith, of my walk, of me going after the Lord like I did, um, of the, the wisdom, the knowledge. I, you know, I have endured. He showed me how to be compassionate. He showed me how to be patient. He showed me how to be loving. He showed me how to deal with difficult people, <laughs> how to love difficult people. Um, the lessons that I have learned on uh, standing and, and just being in that place and going through that hardship has been more, more rewarding than a person can ever imagine. It has been more rewarding. And so this is why I tell wise, you know, it's not about your husband. It's not about, you know, your your marriage is what God is trying to teach you or trying to show you and a lot of times he's trying to show you something about you because he wants to use you for this reason okay wife have to figure out why God called her to this stand why God has allowed the bad to come for her marriage why God said okay the, the door opened and boom you know all kind of hell came it came in why did God allow these things to take place okay it is not just for your husband. It's so much deeper. It's so much deeper. Okay. Yes, your husband may be in a really critical state. Yes, your husband may be in a really, 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 really bad place. But you have to understand that's just that's just a tip of the iceberg of what God is trying to do. Okay. Um, this stand, wife, is not just for your husband. This stand is for you. Okay. It's it's for you. And so I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you and remind you once again. Make sure that you are prioritizing yourself. Make sure that you are taking care of yourself, wife. Make sure that you are doing things that you enjoy doing. Making sure that you are uh, prioritizing your mental health, your emotional health, your spiritual health, and your physical health. Making sure that you know you don't put your all only into your marriage and you don't do anything for yourself. This, this son is really making me mad. That you don't that you don't do um, all this just for your husband, but that you are also actually doing something for yourself. Okay, there it goes. That you are doing something actually for yourself. Okay, this is not just about your husband. This is not just about you know. Oh, I'm standing for my husband. Why you know share all the time? You know how they? I told my husband that you know I'm standing for our marriage. And I'm believing God for our marriage. It's like okay. <laughs> Yes, I roll my eyes sometimes because it's like, it's not about that. Once you really, really get to why, the why behind why are you doing this or the why on why, um, good morning, on the why or why God, um, I'm out of breath just from doing that. See, take care of your, take care of your physical health. <laughs> Once you get to the why behind why God has called you to the stand or why God is allowing y'all to be separated or why God is allowing this man to do these things that he's doing, once you get to that part, it makes it a whole lot better, all right? It makes it a whole lot better. Today, today, I am challenging you, wife. I am challenging you to make sure that you love on yourself today, all right? Make sure that you love on yourself today. Make sure that you do something that you enjoy doing. Make sure that you prioritize yourself. And if you are struggling, if you are struggling with these things and you need to learn how to navigate through this, if you need someone to walk with you, you know, on this, if you have questions, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to sign up, to sign up for your wife consultation. I have been coming in contact with a lot of wives who are, you know, really, really grieving um, in this season. Now, of course, when people think about the word grieving, they think about a loss of somebody or somebody passed away. But you, you do have a loss. You have a loss of what you used to have and you no longer have anymore. And so a lot of these whites are angry. They are angry. They are angry. They cannot understand how this man have went from zero to 100 in a blink of an eye. They cannot understand how these men would do something like this. They have all these questions. They have all these questions. And I always say it's important. It's important that you get in alignment with someone who has been there, done that, understand your story. Everybody not going to understand your story. Some counselors may not understand your story. Some therapists may not understand your story. Some some pastors, preachers, uh, Christian counselors, they may not understand your story. So you need to get in a line with someone who, un who understand, who can help you and let you know, look, it's better on the other side. It's, it's, it's coming, but it's a process. It's a process. God used the ugly things in your marriage to make you a better person. He make, he used those things and he will allow your husband to talk to you all kinds of crazy ways to make you a better person. So you will get tired of arguing with him. You will get tired of trying to fight him. You will get, you, you're like, all right, I ain't doing this today. All right, you can have it. <laughs> Plenty times we like Tanika. Let him have it. I'm like, let him have what? <laughs> no. 
I went left. I would go left many days. And like the Lord, like, all right, you know, you ain't going to listen. So I'm just going to let you just keep on walling in that until you come to a point where you're tired. You have to come to the end of yourself. So until wives come to the end of themselves, then and only then will they be able to like really, really allow God in. Some of the wives say, you know what? I'm, you know, I'm surrendering to God. I'm praying. I'm trusting God. But they say it with their mouths, but they actions are saying something totally different. They actions are saying something totally different. And so I want to encourage you, if you have not already signed up for your, her, um, buoyancy boost, Sign up for their Herb Buoyancy Boost curriculum. You have to sign up, of course, and do your consultation first. If you're ready to do your work, that's what the Herb Buoyancy Boost is about. It's for the wife to do her work. But if you need some, you know, I'm I'm angry. I'm, I need to still talk about this some more. I need to still, you know, you know, deal with this some more. Then you may want to sign up for the, the grief sessions, the grief sessions, okay? And those are also available for wives as well. So you can sign up at www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com. Listen! I did it. It's self-care Saturday. Y'all go out. Do something that you enjoy. Have fun today. I'm going to do some sightseeing myself because um, I'm going to spend my money. But we'll see. Y'all enjoy yourself. I will talk to you guys soon. All right? Have a good day. Blessings.